Kulin Dev Tzadik Tes. Yesterday we learned about the special properties the Zroya of a Nazar, the foreleg of the Nazar's carbon has, where the Brysa says, Zeu Heter Miklal Isur. In other words, this Zroya has a Heter, where otherwise it should be Asr. And we're going to learn three Pshat and what that can mean. Yesterday we learned one. Abaya says it's going only according to Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda holds that Min Beminoi Loi Bato. According to Abaya, this means that if you have two foods that are the same, or two things that are the same, like blood and blood, blood of, a, of an ox and blood of a sawyer, they can never be bottled. Even if you put a million times one of them, it won't be bottled. So Abaya holds that even flavor, which is so minute and unrecognizable, is also not bottled. And therefore, what should happen is if you cook the zraya, you cook the foreleg of the nazar in a pot with the regu- with the rest of the ayo, with the Yisrael as part of the carbon, the Yisrael should not be able to eat it because it's also for the Yisrael to eat the kain's zraya in this case of a nazir. Yet the Torah's mechadish, zeu heter, says in this case, the Yisrael could eat his carbon, we don't care about the flavor. And and we also learn from there the concept of batal b'shishim or batal b'meh. Rava says almost the same thing with a slight variation. Rava says, he talks about the concept of tam ki ikr. Does flavor have the same halacha as the ikr as the original? Because we know flavor is very, very minute. It doesn't weigh anything physically. Yet, the halacha is, according to Rava, in Rabbi Huda, again, this is going according to Rabbi Huda, that only when it comes to kachim is flavor an issue. But when it comes to chulin, we don't care about flavor because it's hardly anything. So all you do is remove the usher food from the pot, and even if it has flavor, we don't care because tam enu So the issue is that zraya, the foreleg of a carbon nazir, is kachim. So over here, flavor should be an issue, according, according to Rabbi Yehuda. Yet over here we say, zeu heter, this is a case of where it's mutter to eat Israya, even though typically it would be usr. And again, we can learn from here for Chulin that a bit of Bashishim and bit of Bemeya. Now, the question is then why don't, like we asked yesterday on Abaya, why don't we learn for all other Kachim that Tam ain't Just like by Zraya, the Tam, the flavor is meaningless, we don't care. So by other Kachim also, the answer is because other Kachim we learn from Khatos. It says, Mefurish, kol asher yiga b'psara, yigdash, anything that just touches, in other words, just flavor, touching, becomes exactly like the chatos. So if the chatos is kosher, so, and it touches the shlamim, let's say, so the shlamim has all the properties of a chatos, so you can't eat it for two days anymore, you can only eat it for one day, you can't eat it outside of the Bishamidosh, only inside of the Bishamidosh. And if it's the chatos is puzzle, then the shlamim becomes puzzle. Now, why don't I learn from the zraya? I could learn from a chatos, I could learn from zraya. The answer is because zraya is a chidosh, like we said yesterday. Uh, the Zraya could go to and cook it with the rest of the animal. Where in the rest of the Torah, you can't take an Isra and be mevatal it l'chatchila on purpose. Now, Ravina says a third pshat. Zeu heter, habamachlal Isra means that typically the, the part that you cut, where you cut, the flat surface of the cut is always Asr. So let's say there's a Ben Pekua who stuck out his hand from his mother's stomach and he cut off that hand because that hand is considered Eber Menachai. Not only is the hand Asr to eat, but also the part, the actual part that touched the knife is also Asr. Whereas over here by Israya, the part that touched the knife is Mutter, Zeu Heter Miklal Yisr. There's two Mishnayis in Arlo. Very simple Mishnayis. They seem confusing, but they're, they're pretty simple. They say as follows. When it comes to Min B'minoy and Min B'shein B'minoy, if you have apples and apples, or apples and oranges, or as the Mishnah calls it, split beans and lentils, they're the same when they impart flavor. If they impart flavor, when you have truma and chulen, so if the truma imparted flavor to the chulen, all the chulen becomes asr, there's no way out of it. Even if you have 101 chulen, it's always asr. The difference between mim b'minoy and mim b'she'ere is where there's no flavor. So if it's mim b'minoy, there's two conditions. First of all, you need that it should impart flavor. And second of all, you need at least 101. As we're going to see later, it means 101 to 1, so a total of 102. But where it's min b'shayin minoy, there's a kula. Abaya thought that that kula is that one in sixtieth. That you need, all you need is sixty to be mevatel. Comes Rav Dimon says to Abaya, no. What you need is a hundred to be mevatel. 
So then why is it considered a kula compared to min bim yinoi? Because min bim is much, much worse. You need 101, not 100. That's the bayatur of dimi. But how does it make sense that if you have something that's 101 times more in volume, 100, 101, you can still feel the flavor? Rav Dimi didn't know what to say. He says, Abai, I'll help you out. Yes, maybe we're talking about leaven, we're talking about sourdough, it's very strong, and even 101 times, you could taste the flavor. He says, Rav Dimi, you just reminded me of something. Rabbi Yehuda says, that when it comes to the brine of fish, it's so strong that in order to be vadal, you need 192 times the amount, close to 200 times. So you see that there are such certain situations where you need a lot more than a hundred. Says the Gemara, we learned in the Mishnah, if you remember, that if you cook a Gedanasha with other food in the same pot, the other food becomes also if the Gedanasha imparted flavor like meat imparts flavor to a turnip. Yet in our Gemara, the, the Gemara uses a little bit of a different Lashon, to meat to the head of a turnip. Points out Rashi that the head of the turnip is sweet, whereas the rest of the turnip is bitter, and it's a lot harder for sweet meat to impart flavor to something that's sweet. It will take a lot more work to do that, whereas you could tell a sweet flavor instantly, or very, a lot easier when you do it lower down on the turnip where it's bitter. Like a part of me see that the Gidan Nasha can impart flavor. Obviously, says the Gemara, this is going according to the Man Omar, yesh begid benoys in time, that a Gid does impart flavor. But we, passing la halacha, that a Gid does not impart flavor. So it wouldn't go according to our Mishnah. In fact, the Gemara says a story where Reb Hanina was passing for somebody about a gid that fell into a tafshel. And when that person came out, Rabbi Huda bar Zvina bumped into him and said, no, what did the, the Ruff say about your question? And he said, the Ruff said it's motor. He says, I want you to go back in and ask the question again. Maybe he didn't understand you. Reb Hanina immediately understood that it's this Rabbi Huda bar Zvina that's standing by the door that sent the guy back in. He said, tell him, stop troubling me. You're, you're causing me aggravation. Because the halacha is that ain't begidin the noise in town. Have a wonderful day.